Hello, it is Monday, October 11th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. It's a Monday puzzle. Should be a nice, easy, gentle crossword. I'm looking forward to that. Breezy solve to start the week. Should be fun. Quickly, I will mention the Patreon campaign, which is how you can help support this channel to make it sustainable going forward. If you head over to patreon.com slash daily solve, which is also linked in the description field underneath the video, you can make a donation of a few pounds a month or the equivalent in your currency to help this thing continue. And in return, you'll get bonus video solves, special access to the Discord channel, various other things such as the potential for recognition at the end of these videos at certain tiers, and a exclusive mug coming up in the next couple months. And speaking of the Discord channel, even if you are not a Patreon contributor, head over there. There's a, a burgeoning community of new crossword constructors that is forming on the Discord server, which is really fun. So I just played through another uh, another constructor's crossword yesterday, uh, Zane, and gave some feedback. And it's fun for me to, to uh, take all of the, oh, I guess, conventions and uh, experience with clues over the years and turn them into feedback for someone who's putting a puzzle together. And obviously I don't think there's anything uh, particularly special about my feedback, but it is fun to provide. And it's been fun playing through these puzzles that people have created over in the Discord server. So if that sounds interesting to you, there's a link to the Discord server underneath each video in the description field, and you can become part of that community as well. You have special access if you are part of the Patreon campaign, but it's free. Most of it is free to access for anybody. All right, let's get on to yesterday's clues and some comments people made about them. It was a Sunday puzzle, so a very large grid. So there are several of these comments. So I'll try to get through them fairly quickly. Tantasar points out that oronyms, that was the word I would not heard before. Tantasar says, oronyms, a phrase coined by Giles Brandreth in the 1980s to refer to phrases that sound the same. Unfortunately, <clears throat> The word was already in use in toponymy, the st study of place names, to refer to the proper names for relief features, hills, mountains, valleys, etc., so it didn't catch on. Deep cut, Mr. Copy, who was the constructor of this puzzle. And Tantasar also adds, <laughs> this, this was very silly on my part, Tantasar essentially points out that I confused flu, F-L-U, with flu, F-L-U-E. Uh, in the... In the crossword, there was uh, the word flu, F-L-U-E, which refers to a flu in a chimney, which is covered in ash often, hence the clue ashy. I sort of sped by it. I think I read it as flu, F-L-U, abbreviated form of influenza, the sickness, and I thought, why is that ashy? Maybe because one's face could be ashen, which was a bit of a reach, but it fit just well enough that I didn't notice my mistake. So thank you for pointing that out. Ben Ward says, a small correction. You referred to She's All That as a Spike Lee film, but you're probably thinking of She's Gotta Have It. Yes, Ben, that is true. I was thinking of She's Gotta Have It, which was Spike Lee's first debut film. I just got those mixed up in my head. Ben Ward, it turns out I didn't even really know what uh, She's All That was, which is, I guess, what helped me confuse them. Ben Ward says, She's All That is a teen rom-com which loosely combines Pygmalion with the unattractive girl takes off glasses and is suddenly hot trope. So there we go. Daniel A. Miller says, You were right that Ike's domain was Europe. There was a clue about Ike's domain in World War II, and I thought it was maybe Europe, E-U-R. It ended up being E-T-O, and I didn't know what that was. Daniel A. Miller says, ETO stands for European Theater of Operations. So there we go. Makes sense. And uh, let's see. Chaz Maru says, Chris may have made many a woman unhappy by offering them dodgy bottles of Chanel number no. four and Chanel number no. nine. My two attempts at the Chanel perfume number before finally getting the correct one, five, which Chaz Maru continues Chanel number, Chanel number five, or so the legend goes, was named as such because it was the fifth sample scent of a new perfume presented to Coco Chanel, who saw it as a good omen to pick the fifth variant for her next fashion show scheduled on May the 5th. 
The perfume became commercialized in 1921 and celebrates its 100th anniversary this year. There are also lesser known Chanel No. 19 and No. 22 perfumes. There we go. And Spiral in Your Eyes clarifies something that maybe has, maybe <laughs> about which I guess I've been misinformed for decades. Spiral in Your Eyes says, Skosh, S-K-O-S-H, does seem to be pronounced with a normal S-H sound as written. I can't find reference to the pronunciation scotch, which is what I think I maybe thought uh, it was. Spiral in Your Eyes continues, it comes from the Japanese word sukoshi, which means a small amount. I came across this fact while learning Japanese, but I hadn't ever heard the English version before. And then Bobby Brace follows up to say, yes, I came here to mention this. It's one of the bits of Japanese that was brought to America from military servicemen stationed in Japan after World War II. In native Japanese pronunciation, the U and the I in Sukoshi are commonly elided. So that would be, I guess, Skosh. So that is very fascinating. I hadn't the slightest clue about that. That is it's just, that is just so interesting, and I never would have guessed. So there we go. Learn all kinds of fascinating things from the New York Times crossword if you take the time to look things up, which fortunately, I don't even need to anymore. My viewers do it for me. So shall we move on to the Monday puzzle? This is a crossword constructed by Ben Paul, edited, as always, by Will Shorts, and I'm going to get right on with it. So let's go. Okay. A large seashell could be a conch shell. A ponytail necessity, possibly a hairpin. Let's see. Actress Blanchett, Kate Blanchett, who I think also came up in the crossword yesterday. And sure, why not? Okay, perhaps? Uh, Director Kurosawa, yes, I think that that, uh, confirms the okay with Akira Kurosawa. And a brand with a swoosh logo is Nike. A good reputation in slang could be cred. One has cred, credit. This is my final offer. Nice long answer here. Take it or leave it. Always fun to get a long answer in all of those crosses. And what may have the solution to your vision problems may well be an eye drop, I suppose. Rush hour traffic, if halting, could be described as stop, go. I think I more often hear that described as stop and go. So let's check the crosses to make sure. Attire for Caesar. Oh, sorry. Ponytail necessity isn't a hairpin, that doesn't make sense, although I suppose it could have one, but much more likely to have a hair tie, that makes more sense. And an attire for Caesar might be his toga. That, there we go, that looks better. To play a trumpet, e.g., could be to toot a trumpet, I suppose. Oh, and I, I think we can see what our theme is going to be on this puzzle. Because 25 across is like something that's polarizing, which could be like it or hate it. So we have it or it theme clues with, I suppose, opposites filling the blanks there. So to put on TV is to air something, to air a program, to put it on TV. And a small mammal that lives mostly underground. Um, A mole or a vole, presumably. And here we have Uncle Sam wants you, so it is a mole. Here we have Uncle in Spanish, which is a tío, that is... Correct. And here we have sign up, which is enroll. Two two L's for the American spelling rather than one for the British. Homes in the Alps. Oh, maybe it's not enroll. Because homes in the Alps, I would assume to be chalets. And so sign up isn't enroll, it's enlist. Equally valid. They're both perfectly plausible fills for that word. Adam Blank, longtime panelist on The Voice. I have never seen The Voice. So let's check the crosses. Social influence. Now you could think that could be cred as well, but uh, but it's not. And what is it? Cachet? No. Let's let's look around. Reddish brown dye. I don't know that either. We'll have to get some crosses here. Half of the digits in binary code are ones, ones and zeros in binary code, and a cubit or a caret. Each of those is a unit, and it's an or, so it's singular, not plural. A pick that might use 16 across. Oh, this must be henna. Henna, reddish brown, uh, used for tattoos. And so a pick that might use 16 across is a tat. And social influence, here we go, is clout. There we go. And the longtime panelist on The Voice must be Adam Levine or Levine. I don't know what other name would fit there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb and say it is that. And here we have next blank technology, next gen for generation technology. 
and a command to the helmsman, helmsman from Jean-Luc Picard would be engage, he might say. If one mentions by name in a tweet, one tags somebody, and the rogue computer in 2001 A Space Odyssey is Hal 9000, I think. To put off later as a motion is to table, just sort of the opposite of its meaning in British English in a way. A purchase at the Met Museum maybe could be an art book. Yeah, that looks right. And to tip over is to keel over. And when you see the parentheses here, what that means is that the word in the answer, it actually means tip. The word doesn't mean tip over. It means tip. But this parentheses means in both cases, in both the clue and the answer, we could add over to create the same meaning. So you would say tip over and you'd say keel over. That's what that means. When it's in parentheses like that, you, you apply it to both. Okay. Forbidden action. It could be a no-no. My first thought was veto, but that's an action that forbids rather than an action that is forbidden. So no-no. And a tiny builder of tunnels and hills could be an ant. A WC could be a toilet. And here we're going to have another or, I bet. Get out of the way move it or lose it. So get out of the way, I suppose. And here we have time in New York when it's noon in Chicago. Oh, right. This isn't like it or hate it. It's love it or hate it. I don't know why I thought like it. Love it is certainly much more accurate, both because that's actually the phrase, love it or hate it, and also because it's more accurate to the clue. Something that's polarizing, someone hates it or loves it. They don't just like it or dislike it. Sorry about that. So a time in New York when it's noon in Chicago looks like 1 p.m. to me. Um, and even if you don't know the time zone difference between New York and Chicago, I mean, they're in the same country. They're both in the United States. So you could probably assume if it starts with O, it'll be one and it won't be AM. That would be a huge difference. So in blank land, in la la land, a feature introduced to the iPhone in 2009. Um, I don't know. A feature introduced to the iPhone in 2009. I think the iPhone came out in maybe 2006 or so. Boy, I just don't know. We'll have to see with crosses. A licorice-like flavoring is anise. Oops. And an opening of an article in journalism lingo. This is sort of a... But I would say this is maybe slightly obscure for a Monday. This is lead, spelled L-E-D-E. I don't really know how this sort of thing evolved, but in journalism slang, in written journalism slang, there's a convention of spelling certain words like lead, lead meaning the sort of opening of an article, in an unusual way. And similarly, you have graph, as in paragraph, as G-R-A-F, -A or a number of journalistic terms like that. I'm not sure how that evolved, but it did. And that's what this is, which is, again, a bit surprising to me on a Monday. Um, anyway, I guess you could get it with crosses because, and I should have guessed this as video for the iPhone. Here we have, oops, and here we have King Kong or Donkey Kong, each of which is an ape, one from film and one from a video game. And then word after that's my or right on could be man, that's my man, right on man. Looks right, I suppose. No, although send off as rays, I don't think it's man because this looks like emit as rays. That's my... I'm not really seeing it. Lip service. And official language of Iran. Um, Farsi. Former Hawaii representative Gabbard. I learned the other day, actually, that it's sort of, uh, many Iranians would consider it inaccurate to describe this language as Farsi in English, because that's the language, that's the way the language is um, named in its own language. Whereas we wouldn't refer to French as Francais or Spanish as Espanol, we say French or Spanish. And so you could say um, Persian, I suppose. Uh, anyway, not everyone agrees on that, but that was a viewpoint I heard expressed recently, and I thought it was it made sense. 
Anyway, you have my sympathy. I care. Oh, I see. That's my cue or right on cue is the word after that's my or right on. Former Hawaii Representative Gabbard is Tulsi Gabbard and lip service. Oh, I see a balm. You could put a balm on your lips. And then some college grads for short are BAs in the US and many countries. A BA is a Bachelor of Arts. And documents, downloads, desktop, etc. are folders. And A-E-I-O-U and sometimes Y are vowels. A big name in DVD rental kiosks. Oh, red, red something, red box? Is that? Haven't seen those in ages. On the basis of blank, film about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. On the basis of sex was a biopic, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And then here we have, uh, appropriately crosses with a Supreme Court decision. Ruth Bader Ginsburg was, of course, a an American Supreme Court justice, and Roe v. Wade is a Supreme Court decision. And if one is trying to win one over romantically, one is wooing them. Counterparts of columns, for instance, in a crossword grid, might be rows. Not quite in shape, male physiques. Oh, this is dad bods, which sort of became a bit of a meme journalistically, I think, a few years ago. And then a titular Shakespearean king would be King Lear. Uh, here, having another one of our theme answers, having no middle ground between success and failure. Um, break it, make it or break it. I think I usually hear that phrase, make or break, but I suppose make it or break it is feasible enough, but that's it's a little more awkward, I think, than the other ones, which I always think of as having the it, or at least often. Okay, Thai currency is the bot, I believe. A 1930s migrant is an Okie. I think this came up in the crossword maybe yesterday or the day before. A migrant from Oklahoma. So obviously that is a very American clue. To have a nice meal is to dine. Any rung on a ladder is a step of the ladder. And so here we can see these crosses. Some hills and prices are steep. And the German river to the North Sea is the Rhine. So that all looks good. The material for Cinderella's slipper was glass. And a hit 2012 musical about paper boys. Oh, Newsies, I guess. I had no idea that was that recent. I don't really know anything about Newsies. Okay, country singer Steve. I'm actually not sure, so let's back up here to D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser. Muriel Bowser, mayor of D.C. So quite a few American political uh, clues in this puzzle because we had Tulsi Gabbard. We had a clue referring to Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We had Roe v. Wade. Um, quite a few. Okay, a vegetable used to thicken stews is okra. And a biblical false god is Baal, B-A-A-L, I believe. And actress Ryan is Meg Ryan. And I'm glad that I've heard of Meg Ryan because I have never heard of country singer Steve Earl or Earl Steve, but I assume it is Steve Earl. There we go. So that was maybe maybe a slightly more difficult Monday puzzle than usual, let me know. I, it's one of those puzzles that could be, I think, completely, completely straightforward if you have all of the cultural context necessary for some of those answers. If not, it might be much more difficult because you'll have some, some tougher crosses in there. But uh, a nice solid theme for a Monday. I think a pretty, pretty classic Monday theme in the sense that it doesn't really require anything complex to understand. It's just some phrases that share a common format, and it does make the puzzle a little bit easier to solve. I think if you if you encountered this clue having no middle ground between success and failure, and you didn't have this theme, and you didn't know this or thing was going on, that's a long answer, and it's a pretty broad it's a pretty broad uh, brief that we're given here to come up with a phrase that means that. But with the or, it might not be a total pushover if you had no crosses. But if you have some crosses, it's a lot easier to get this long phrase, make it or break it from this clue. So um, I think that's what you want out of a Monday theme. Maybe it helps you out a little bit, not too difficult to understand, makes the solve a little bit smoother. Yeah. Good old Monday. But do let me know if you found this to be tougher than your average Monday. That was sort of my instinct 
solving it is that it seems maybe a little harder than a Monday can be. There was a bit of uh, slightly more obscure knowledge in there, perhaps. So if you enjoyed this video, and I very much hope you did, please do subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, it's nice seeing that number go up, and uh, it means that I think what that means in part is that YouTube will help uh, propagate this video out to, to the world and, and uh, put it out into the algorithm or however it works. So please do subscribe if you're enjoying it. Uh, let a friend know if you think they might enjoy this or broadcast it out to your, your internet community, wherever that may be online. And if you're particularly enjoying this series, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, consider contributing to the Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash daily solve. And there you will get some interesting bonus content, or at least I think the people who are patrons to date find it interesting. Hopefully you will as well. And um, I put up on uh, on Saturday the first competition solve of the Boss Words Fall Themeless Challenge, which is a, a competition that's currently running. And I think for the next one, I'm going to try and solve it a little faster, maybe with less commentary. Someone from the uh, Discord suggested solving more quickly and then doing a whole recap at the end rather than as I go. And I think that makes sense. So I'm going to give it a shot and see, see how the patrons like it. And if you'd like to become one of them, there's a link in the description field underneath each video. One thing that also is available to uh, Patreon backers is the opportunity to be recognized at the end of these videos for your generous support. And today, I would like to thank Overfull Hitbox and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you so much, Overfull Hitbox and Hood Monster, for your very generous support for helping keeping this helping keep this thing going. I really do appreciate it. And thanks so much to everybody else who has backed the Patreon in particular, but also thanks to you for watching. Thanks for making it to the end. Hopefully you do the same tomorrow for the Tuesday puzzle, which maybe will be a shade tougher, although you never know. Sometimes Monday and Tuesday swap difficulty, and today was maybe a slightly tougher Monday. So that may augur a smooth Tuesday. You'll only know if you come back and find out. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Monday. Take care. Mm -hmm.